What is good, everyone? Camp begins Tuesday. We got a lot to discuss on today's show. Training camp roster, it's set. We'll discuss that. The Warriors brass tips their hand on what the team's plans are this season. And do those plans involve Brandon Pajemski shooting 10 threes a game and Andrew Wiggins scoring 20 points per game? We're discussing that and more on today's Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, everyone? Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen of every day. We are free and available wherever you get your audio podcast. Take us on the go that way and, and stay for a while. Crack one open and watch us on YouTube. And while you're there, leave us the like. Leave us the subscribe and go ahead and hit that bell so you know when we are doing live shows, which is after every single game this season, instant post-game reaction. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. My name's Charlie Walter, formerly of 95.7 The Game in the Bay Area. That's the flagship for the Golden State Warriors. Also, Worked for KPIX, which is CBS News Bay Area. Uh, there, covered the Warriors championship run in 21-22. One of my co-hosts on 95.7 The Game, it's Matt Kolsky. You can currently hear him from time to time on KNBR. And today, we're cracking one open, Kolsky, because we have gotten through the doldrums. Training camp is here on Tuesday. The Wild Wild West Tour may have seen the wagon break down in Waco because we don't have to talk about other teams. We don't have to talk about hypotheticals anymore. That season is over. The time has come. Real burning questions and storylines that will unfold and develop daily. And on today's show, we're talking defense, optionality, positive energy, good mojo, and more of the buzzwords. But let's start with the training camp roster, Kolsky. I'm going to run down real quick. First of all, tell me how you're doing on this fine Sunday slash Monday whenever you're listening. I'm doing great. Uh, like you said, we had a real press conference to to digest here. Like It's coming. Before you know it, we'll have a preseason game to talk about. They're back. Here's what the Warriors are running out with. Uh, 20 members of the training camp roster. It's Kyle Anderson. It's the two-way Reese Beekman, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, Buddy Heald, Trace Jackson Davis, Blake Henson, Kevin Knox, Jonathan Kaminga, Kevon Looney, D'Anthony Melton, Moses Moody, Gary Payton, Brandon Bajemski, the two-way man, Quentin Post, Jackson Rowe, Guy Santos, two-way Pat Spencer, Lindy Waters the third, and Andrew Wiggins. New assistant coaches, Jerry Stackhouse, and Terry Stotts, you may have noticed I did not mention the name Daquan Plowden. Warriors waived him last week. He is now a member of the Atlanta Hawks. They signed him. He will not be competing for camp this upcoming season. I, I kind of liked his game. Would have loved to have seen what he could do in camp. But unless he breaks out in a big way in Atlanta, I don't think anyone's going to lose any sleep over that one. So let's start with defense. Because it's always been critical with the Golden State Warriors. Offense gets the credit because it's poetry in motion, but the championship teams, and even as recent as the 2022 championship team that had the number two defense at all of the league behind the Celtics who they beat in the championship, it's always kind of been their MO, and that's what it sounds like from Dunleavy and Kerr, is really one of the top three biggest emphasis entering this year. Yeah, it's one of the great misconceptions of the Warriors. I mean... Steve Kerr kind of alluded to this today in his press conference that the, those Durant teams, the talent was just so ridiculous. It, it That was kind of a different time. But even then, their defense was exceptional when they were, when it came time to turn it on. And you had, you know, whether it was a, a small lineup with Durant at the four and Draymond at the five, I mean, like the arms on all the guys they could put on the floor – I was talking to some friends about the uh, the New York Knicks plan to play defense with their new squad. And really, their plan seems to just be, you know, OG Ananobi and uh, Miles Bridges will do everything. Just long arms, 
on the perimeter. Don't let anybody get to the paint. That, that'll that be the way we defend the paint. Uh, that's what those Warriors were like. The Bogut Warriors were obviously different. You know, Draymond was great, but not maybe as savvy as he has become in his later career. And they had a real legit big man center on that team. But, but nevertheless, in all these different iterations, while a lot of the attention went to offense for obvious reasons, the calling card, so to speak, was defense. Uh, the nature of three-point shooting is that you're going to have some off nights. And the way the Warriors won 72 games, 73 games, whatever it was. How do I not remember that? Uh, it's 73. The war, the Bulls had 72. The way the Warriors won 73 games was by defending every night. And even on the nights where the offense wasn't peak efficiency, they could win with defense. Uh, that has not been the case the last couple of seasons. And a huge part of that has been Draymond's availability and issues throughout those two seasons, I think. I mean, that guy functioning at the peak of his game is good for a top 10 defense anyway. You know, you want to get the top five, six, seven, you're probably uh, going to need some other guys to come along with you. But just having a full, healthy, uh, let's call it uninterrupted season of Draymond Green will go a long way to getting And him. hopefully Wiggins too, right? Because that's something they've been missing, his full attention the last few you years, and rightfully Wiggins, so. Yeah, Wig you hope Wiggins is there. And as you say, you have his full attention and presence. You hope that. Kyle Anderson gives you some optionality at the four and five defensively. DeAnthony Melton is a good defender. Gary Payton is back healthy. If that's a, an option that they want to go to Kavon Looney is still here. Trace Jackson Davis proved to be a good defender. You know, look, Steph Curry is what he is on defense, which is a guy who's doing his best at his size and, and, you know, lateral mobility. Um, but outside of that, most of the guys on the team right now, I think, project as plus defenders. You know, Buddy Heald is an exception to that. But if Kaminga makes a leap in terms of knowing where to be, he was already last year a tremendous one-on-one -on -one defender against wings and, you know, not maybe not Jokic bigs, but some bigs. Flashes it, of being great, right? Flashes Johnson of being Kaminga, has a great defender inside of him. Now, whether that guy will show up this season is anybody's guess, but I, I that's something that they would certainly would like to see. Pajemski is not big, but he is tough and smart and plays well on the defensive end. Like this looks like a really good defensive team. Their obvious problem is they don't have very many tall guys, but that hasn't stopped them in the past. No, it has not stopped him in the past. But, uh, I mean, depending on what their plan is with Quentin Post this upcoming season, and, and given the fact that he's a two-way guy, I don't think you'd expect him to be up from the start. I think he's going to spend plenty of time in Santa Cruz. And he's not really a banger. He's more of a five that's going to stretch the floor, but he gives yeah. you plenty of size. He's a legit yeah. seven feet. And then Trace Jackson Davis with the, the how, how vertical he plays. He's bigger than six foot nine. Or whatever and listen – Kavon Looney is 6'9". However, I struggle to think of big men who have simply overwhelmed him with size, with any consistency. So, you know, like I said, it has not stopped them. Kavon Looney has not been a limiting factor in the Warriors' defense at any point. So even though you look at them and say they're undersized, and they are literally – Kevon Looney does a heck of a job. Draymond does a heck of a job playing above his size. You know, Kaminga is a guy that you would hope would get to be able to do some of that as, as time goes on. You, They'll make do. Um, and post, look, if you project the best possible version of post, it's tantalizing for the Golden State Warriors. But I think with all due respect to everyone involved, the, the great hope is that you do not need Quentin Post this year. Fair enough. Uh, some more notes on the defense. Kind of becoming evident that the Golden State Warriors' best path to winning a championship this year is, is through a really good defense. Based on what they stockpiled in the offseason, 
based on their lack of really a second scoring option. It would have to be a little like 21, 22 season where you have a top five defense and uh, Dunleavy GM actually outlined that said the team has to return to a top five, seven defense in the league. Thought he did a great job fixing the defense this off season, starting with the Jerry Stackhouse hire who is coming in as, as the quote unquote, um, the unofficial quote unquote defensive coordinator while Terry Stotts is uh, running the offensive side of the ball. But uh, Dunleavy and Kerr said how important it is to getting back to being one of the best. They mentioned that transition defense fell off the map last year and they have better personnel to shore it up. Feels like they have a lot of defensive versatility, guys that can guard multiple positions and not too many holes defensively. At least um, they can you know, work lineups around it. But that's the big question entering this season lineups the Warriors have legit 12 guys according to Steve Kerr who's going to be playing this upcoming season and why the Golden State Warriors are talking good vibes only entering this year and maybe has to do with their trip to Hawaii we're discussing that coming up on Locked on Warriors first let's tell you about our sponsor FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel America's number one sports book so when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. That is guaranteed. It's when you place your first $5 bet on FanDuel.com. Super Bowl odds this season. The Kansas City Chiefs are leading the way at plus 500, according to FanDuel. The San Francisco 49ers, second behind them. McCaffrey could be returning in November. They have plus 650 odds. The Ravens at plus 950. The Buffalo Bills at plus 1,000. And my sleeper pick, keep an eye on him. Sam Darnold has looked splendid. The former Niner, the Minnesota Vikings right now at plus 1,700. Go check out those odds on FanDuel.com. All right, so the Golden State Warriors this upcoming season, in terms of their lineup, who the hell knows what it's going to look like come March, come April, because optionality was a word that was thrown around by Mike Dunleavy to, I guess, spark notes to Chuck note what Mike Dunleavy said during his press conference. It was basically, we like the team that we have. We're going to roll the ball out there with the team that we have, and we'll see what happens. The exact quote that he said had something to do with, um, I'm pulling this up right now. He said, When it comes to optionality, we have to see what this team is. There are a lot of ways we can be good, a ton of different pieces. The good news is we have plenty of ways to get better from the outside through trades. But as of now, we like this team and we will see. He's talked about how impatient it is right now for this franchise, considering the timeline. There's a fine line, according to him, between being impatient and undisciplined, which is why they didn't make some trades over the summer. They felt like those trades would not get them to the top. So they're going to roll the ball out there right now and see what happens. Seems like a very non-committal approach. What do you think about the Warriors brass kind of tipping their hand of, of what this season's going to be? Although we all kind of knew it. Well, I would say, first of all, that he sounded way less lukewarm on the roster to hear him speak than it sounds when you just read some of those quotes. Um, I do think he believes this team has a lot of ways to be good. And I don't think they're necessarily going into the year saying we got to do something because the the key here, and, and you mentioned it, what he said after that part about the fine line between aggressive or what was it, impatient and uh, undisciplined, is that he he gave sort of a whole little spiel about how it doesn't make sense to go all in to be a little better than average. And I I think that's obviously like an extreme. But I think for, for the franchise, their attitude continues to be it doesn't make sense to go all in to be second best. I think if they were to go all in, which is to say mortgage most, if not all of the future, which would be Kaminga and Moody and Pajemski and draft picks and all that stuff. 
they would have to believe they became a legitimate title favorite, if not the favorite, one of the the two or three favorites. Uh, and I'm not sure there's been a deal that would have done that for them. I, I don't. And I think that's the thing that a lot of the, the angrier portions of the fan base miss on this is that. Yes, but look, obviously mistakes have been made. Not everything the Warriors have do- done has been great. Um, James Wiseman being the biggest and most obvious of those mistakes in, in a couple of different ways. But at every turn, they've done what they thought gave them the best way to be good again soon and also remain good into the future. That's uh, Those two goals, a lot was made of that two-timeline thing, right? But tell me a single franchise that doesn't want to be good today and also tomorrow, right? That's that really, that's the goal for everybody. It's just so rare that someone is in a position where it seems like there's a real opportunity for it. And the Warriors, you know, you could say that they bungled that opportunity in some respects, but I would argue that they handled it better than just about anyone ever. And that you just don't see examples of the greatest superstars aging gracefully and continue to continuing to win championships until they, you know, decide to hang them up at the ripe old age of 40. LeBron is the closest we've seen to that. And he hasn't won anything in a while. So uh, that's that's the state the Warriors are in. That's the stage they're at of this franchise. But that doesn't mean the only or best way forward has to be going all in just because Steph Curry is here. And I think it has to be wait and see that, right? And he he kind of see it. It's wait and see. You you, got to see the ball tip off. You got to examine what the Warriors have. The, The only, here's the good news. There's to, to oversimplify everything. There's one path to the Warriors getting back to being very relevant in the NBA scene. And that is just make sure that your young guys get off to great starts this season. That's what gives you the optionality. And that Wiggins pops. Steve Kerr mentioned, you know, he thinks Wiggins is a 20 points per game kind of guy. Averaged 12 a season ago. I don't know if that's their plans this upcoming season. But if Pods is shooting 8 to 10 threes like he says he's going to and is knocking down 41% like we know he's capable of, all of a sudden you got a, a trade chip that's very cheap or you can just keep them. Kaminga the same way if he pops. If Moody's a really good player, you add in more. So the best way forward is just seeing how this season goes or seeing how the first three months of the season goes. The exact deadline date is December 15th, where the mid-level guys are now trade eligible. That's Heald, that's Anderson, that's Melton. And at that point, you can kind of reevaluate. But that's the only thing you can do. The Warriors aren't in like a, a great position to where right now, today, they can. I know a lot of people are pissed they didn't go after Carl Anthony Towns. How would they have gotten him? You know, how would they have made the money right? They can't. They, 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 there's. Yeah, I was just. I'm, I'm trying to do. You know, during a hypothetical season, trying to expand everyone's minds to where it's like it's 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 not always possible. I'm just asking questions. I don't think it was possible for them to get Carl Anthony Towns. Full stop. Um, I don't think they had play the the players that. I mean, the thing about Minnesota is they're not trying to now start developing new young players, right? Like, say what you will about Julius Randle. Uh, he is 20 and buckets. 10 most nights <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now. You he know, gets so he much is, hate for someone that literally averages 25-10. I, yeah, and this is an, I, I don't want to have a whole Julius Randle breakdown. I, I also think he gets a bum rap. But, but the point is, that's an established, if not all-star, at least high-level starter in the NBA, like Minnesota was not looking for prospects and draft picks. They got Dante DiVincenzo and Julius Randle. That's like 60 minutes a night of basketball players who have playoff experience. Um, And I'm not saying Kaminga might not even, I would, I kind of hope Kaminga is better this year than Julius Randle, but that's still not the direction the Timberwolves were looking to move from towns right they have their young guys already (laughs) uh i don't i don't think they're looking for more young guys they're looking for pieces to fit around them and and that's not what the warriors have really um also i'm not 100 sure carl towns is the sort of guy 
the Warriors like in the locker room, so to speak. Um, he's just very goofy for their tastes, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong with having a goofball in the locker room? Come on, a seven foot goofball that can knock down threes? I'll take it. I'll... There's a lot to like about Carl Anthony Towns, and there's some things not to like, and I don't quite know what to make of it. But again, the the, the operative point here is more... The point is they would have had to have traded Wiggins in order what? to make that deal happen, and the Timberwolves aren't taking Wiggins back. So it was a moot point, right? That's because right. that's the piece that would have made it happen. It's an entirely moot point, and I just... Not to say all of these potential opportunities over the last few years have been moot points, but many of them have. Many, many, many of them have. And the ones that haven't, like this Laurie Markkinen thing, it's really difficult to say. We'll never probably know exactly until Mike Dunleavy writes his autobiography in 30 years what exactly was on the table, what they exactly said no to, what Danny Ainge ever really offered. Was there ever anything really on the table? We don't know any of that for sure. We have some reports and some innuendo and some guesses. So I tend to think, based on watching them do business, based on what I know from the people inside the organization that I have met over the years and and like talking to, I mean, I, I've sat down with Bob Myers on enough occasions to like know who that guy is. I, I, I have less experience with Dunleavy, but I, I'm not, I'm not trying to drop names. I'm just saying like, <laughs> I spent a decade around this organization and almost without, exception the people who work for them are smart thoughtful people taking intelligent measures to attempt to do the right thing and i i think that has been the case in almost every trade negotiation it doesn't mean they've gotten them all correct but i don't think there's a lot of like ah, you know we'd rather make a few bucks or oh the owner's ego is stopping us from doing what we ought to do. Like there is this idea that those things are happening. And I just think it is largely untrue. I think largely they try to do the things that will make the team better when they think they can make the team better. And there just have not been as many opportunities to do that as some people would like to imagine. Coming up. The October deadline to extend Moody and Kaminga. If they are not given deals, by that point, are you somewhat worried about their future? Or at least, um, you know, questioning their future in a Golden State Warriors jersey. Plus, good vibes only. Why it's the the theme right now. We heard it a lot from Steve Kerr. It's coming up. I'm locked on right. Warriors. I'm, Ride the I'm, wave, baby. I'm Ride the wave. I'm doing a what is it? The the look. Uh, Hawaii. I'm doing Hawaii. I'm locked on Warriors. First, let's tell you about game time. Game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I'm a big fan of going to live events, whether they be sporting, whether it's a concert, whether it's a comedy show, whatever it may be. It's always a good time. You got to get tickets somehow. The easiest way to do it and to take the guesswork out of it is just to download the Game Time app. One of my favorite things about it is you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. You make sure that just because you have section 127 and you think they're good seats, you make sure they're good seats. You could be sitting behind a pole. You never know. Also, it's got the lowest price guarantee. If it's not, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And as always, the closer you get to your event, the cheaper the tickets get. Procrastinators, hands together. We thank you, Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NBA for $20 off. All right. So the Golden State Warriors head out to Hawaii. First of all, Media Day is on Monday, the 30th. So when you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance that Media Day has concluded. Obviously, subscribe to the show because we will have all the nuggets that come out from Chase Center on Monday the 30th. And on the 1st, it's Aloha. The Warriors are heading out to Hawaii and camp is opening. And when I listened to Steve Kerr during his press conference, he, he said a lot of buzzwords to me. Things that got me excited was hearing about Andrew Wiggins, how he's motivated and at peace. 
in his physical prime and looks physically fit right now said we've seen him do it we're expecting a big year and he's going to have to help clay's scoring because he said he's going to be featured and he's proven he's a 20 point a night kind of guy but the other thing that stood out good vibes good energy talked about changing things up going to hawaii this offseason hoping that maybe it you know didn't say it directly but it almost felt like this hawaii trip is just to get off on the uh, on the right note, right? Get a little sunshine. They're bringing the families there, just to ease into to camp, get going, figure things out in a beautiful place. That's what it sounded like to me. I think that's eighty percent of it. I think the other twenty percent, and you hear about this sometimes in early season road trips, right? The like bonding experience of of travel together for a week or two, and I do think that's pretty important to this group because I, you know whether uh, this offseason was primarily the departure of of clay but over the last four or five years there's been so much attrition to the guys that made the warriors the warriors other than Stephen draymond and the young guys i guess have sort of started to experience that but like this it's a it's a it's such a new group. It feels like more key players to this squad are foreign to the, the organization than it's felt in a while. Um, At least in their current roles. Right. And I, again, that's been an accumulative effect of, of departures over several years, but it does feel like this is a group that needs to sort of find out who they are rather than an extension of what this dynasty has been. You know, even up to last year, it I think as long as Steph and Clay and Draymond were together, it was always going to feel very much like an extension of the dynasty run. And, and we're trying to extend it. We're trying to make this same team good again. Now it almost feels like a new version. And I think getting that new version to bond and, and figure out their identities within that group as quickly as possible is a big deal because one thing they also said over and over again, both Dunleavy and Kerr is like, we're not trying to start 500 for two months again. We cannot afford to slow start this thing. If we want to be where we want to be, which is in the real playoffs one through six, it's got to start that way. The optionality that he mentioned does start with, you know, individual players and the team getting off to a good start. Uh, was also asked about a second score and literally said that he, he doesn't know. Made a joke that the other team may not know either. He's like, hey, it could help us. Other teams could go in. The Jazz could go in and not know who's going to go off any night. <laughs> mentioned how deep the team is and that if it doesn't work out, they have optionality and can pivot. I personally hate that mindset, but right now it's the only mindset they can have. Right. They don't really have any other choices. I, I think we could do a whole show on this because I think really, we will. We, will. I, we, got, I, we got days before the season. Yeah. But I just think too much is being made of the. Who's the second score question? Because like. I mean, OK, even if we just think Andrew Wiggins is returning to his past Warriors form. OK, not not even his best. That's still like 17, 18 points a game, right? I mean, even if it's not 20. What was Kaminga last year? 16? Yeah, he was third leading score. I don't think it's crazy to expect a slight increase from him. So, like, if you have Steph and then two guys averaging 18 a game, show me the top three scores that are leagues ahead of that, and I'll show you the two or three best teams in the league. You know, it's not a lot of guys. They're just now there are lots of teams that have a I kicked my camera. Apologies. There are lots of teams that have a, a second scorer who is more established and consistent than anyone the Warriors have. But on any given night. They're going to have guys who can score like Wiggins. Historically, the one thing he's done with great consistency is put the ball in the basket, maybe not always in the way you'd want him to or with the efficiency you'd want him to. But like the guy gets points he does and he has foregone that at times as a warrior but that's something he's more than capable of Jonathan Kaminga can score the basketball like he can it's and then 
between Pajemski and Heald and Melton and Anderson. And there's just a lot of, there's going to be enough scoring if they get the team working the way it should. There's going to be enough guys on any given night, provided everyone is okay with not having that designated role as the number two score. That's going to be the real test is how quickly does this team come together and look like a Steve Kerr Warriors team. And if that answer is fast, I really think they can hang around that four to six range all year long. Good stuff. Final notes I want to get to because you mentioned like how the word I use is cohesion. Like how long does it take them to kind of have the cohesion the verb, the way they want to play? That's what I was trying to think of. Do you cohede? They need to like cohede very quickly. <laughs> We'll, we'll say right. that's a word. We'll, uh, we'll say that's a word. Coheve, coheve. But one of the things is because he was asked, Kerr was asked about you know styles changing because of the new faces trying to match you know match the personnel how they play. Uh, Kerr said, "You know when you play the Warriors, the ball is going to move. That's not going to change. Challenge is going to be maintaining their identity, but simplifying everything because that's a word he used in his presser was we need to simplify things this season." not make it too complex, but can they have the same success with a simpler system? Uh, said you cannot compare this team to six years ago. That was one of the great all-time rosters. Like it's just the way they're going to do it this year. It's going to be different. Fully healthy. That's one thing we heard during the press conference. As of right now, everyone is good to go. Transition offense along with transition defense is a huge talking point this season. Warriors want to run more. They want to finish more just higher volume and be more effective. He was asked Kerr was about how they improve in transition and basically said that um, better spacing, high IQ basketball, don't turn it over as much because they've been turning it over a lot and um, reactionary transition team compared to last year. That's what they need to be. So that's what we get to there. And then one final question for you because we teased it. So we got to get to it. You got about 90 seconds to give it to me. Uh, Dunleavy on Moody and Kaminga's extensions. Because as of right now, October 21st is the date where they're extension eligible or the extension deadline rather. And Dunleavy has said that regardless of whether they get something done or not, they want Moody and Kaminga to be warriors. He said, just because you don't get an extension done doesn't mean they won't be here for a long time. Do you believe if they're not extended by that October deadline, it points to potential trade pieces? Or do you believe Mike when he says they're committed to these two? I believe they're as committed as they've ever been. <laughs> I, I, again, both of them are trade pieces. If, if the right trade comes around, that's just a fact. And I do think if you sign them uh, to an extension, it changes that. So that is an incentive not to, but I also believe that they really like both players. And I also believe that there's a price that they would extend both guys at right now. That said, I don't think there's, I mean, look, it, let's start with Moody real quick. I don't think there's any incentive for either side to do that deal. Moses Moody hasn't had a chance to prove himself at all. The Warriors don't really know what he is at all. Uh, see the year, Offer him what you want to offer him, and you have rights to match if he if he gets a better offer somewhere else. Kaminga, I would just give him the max because that's where this is all headed. Um, but I can understand them not being like super jumpy and excited to do that. My only worry there is, do you risk upsetting a guy who has already publicly um, had some issues with the way you've handled his career? Good question. More debates to come on Locked on Warriors. Monday through Friday shows are back. Season is here. Media day on the 30th. Maybe the day you're listening to the show. And then on the 1st, Warriors go to camp. Plenty of storylines to break down. Let's hypothetical, go. Hypothetical season is over. Um, trade rumor season Cheers. is over. All that portion. The Wild Wild West tour is done. As I mentioned, the wagon breaks down in Waco. And it is time for some <laughs> Golden State Warriors basketball. Looking forward to it, big guy. Looking forward to it. Locked on Warriors, everyone. Let's go. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Peace.